Hi there, I'm Jay Atwood, and today I'm going to show you about the new Doctopus and the new way that you can find, install, and reuse Google Apps scripts. So here we are in the new version of Google Sheets. When this was released not too long ago, many of us were surprised to find that the script gallery was no longer found under the Tools menu. And that's where, where we used to go to find all of the scripts to install. Now there's a new way for distributing scripts under a menu called Add-ons. Click on Add-ons and then Get Add-ons and a new pop-up window will come up and it will show you the, all the possible add-ons that are available for you. This new add-on gallery has a lot more information than the scripts gallery did. When you hover over an add-on, you get some information and when you click on it, you'll have a pop-up window that looks similar to the Chrome Web Store. There are various screenshots, as well as information down below. Overview, ratings, user reviews will all be there. When you're ready to install, just click plus. Now this is the part that's really new and very exciting. Now you only have to install each script or add-on once. As soon as you install it once, you give it permission to do the things that it needs to do, and you never have to install it again. It will always be available for you, and I'll show you how here in a second. Click on Accept, and you'll be taken back to the spreadsheet where you'll get some information and pop-ups. So there's a new little working graphic down here at the bottom. Then you'll get some information about the script that you've just added. And now you start to see the coolest new design feature of Doctopus. You can see this pop-up sidebar over on the right where the script lives. We'll get there in a second. But this main pop-up here is where you can click on here, click on this button to learn more, or I'm just going to go ahead and close it. Now I'll get to this sidebar over here in a second, but I just want to show you about this add-ons menu and how it works. Now when I click on it, Doctopus is available for me, and all the steps will appear here. Since I'm just starting, there's not many steps available, but those will grow as I go through the setup process. What I really like, though, is that every time I create a new spreadsheet, no matter what, it remembers that I like Doctopus and that I've already authorized it and it will be an option for me here right from the get-go. I won't have to go back into the add-ons gallery to install it again because it remembered. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. The more add-ons you add, the longer the list will be here. And you can manage these add-ons if you ever want to unauthorize them. You can remove them by clicking on Manage and remove. It's really simple. All right, let's dive into the new Doctopus and see how it works. The first thing you'll notice in this pane over here on the right is that there's a lot more help information. So they've added more instructions for people who are just learning how to use Doctopus, as well as for those of us who've been using it for a while to explore some of the, the cool new features. So step one is now to select your roster, and this is something new. Before, whenever you used Doctopus, you had to copy and paste your roster from another sheet. Now, Doctopus is going to remember your rosters, and you can reuse them. Since this is the first time, I have to build a new roster. There are several new ways to build your rosters. You can find details on each of these down below. I'll kind of quickly go through them. When you click on the Select Method dropdown, you have three options. You can build a roster from this sheet, you can import from G-Class folders if you're using that, or if you use Hapara's teacher dashboard, you can import it straight from there. I'm going to go ahead and build it from this sheet. A new Create Roster button comes up, so you click on that. You see the new Doctopus graphic as well. You'll see him various parts of him throughout this. Doctopus has gone ahead and started to create my roster columns for me. Okay, so I need to go ahead now, enter my uh, class roster on the sheet and then click the refresh button. To make things easier I've got, thing, I've got these saved over on another sheet and I'm just going to copy them over. Okay, so I've got first name, last name, and email. Click refresh. It's now preparing these rosters for reuse. So you give each roster a unique name. So if you teach more than one class or more than one period or more than one grade level you can save each of those separately. In this case, this is my Psychology A1. Now you probably notice here a little checkbox called Create Class Folders. In this version of Doctopus, Andrew has actually integrated a lot of the code from G Class Folders. 
So if you haven't already set up class foldage, you can do it right from within Doctopus without having to run anything else. In another video, I'll walk you through this process, but for now, we'll just save our roster and continue. Great, now we're at step three, and this is where it's gonna look familiar to previous users of Doctopus. There are four different ways that you can share documents with your students, and they're noted here below the dropdown. Each one's color-coded, so it's easy to tell them apart. Individual all the same means everybody gets at their own copy of the document, but they all get the same version. Differentiated allows you to give different copies to different students based on a field, in this case called group. And whole class, which creates a single document for everybody to work on together. In this case, I'm going to just choose individual all the same. I want to have a starter template that I want to give them. When you select each kind through the dropdown, the information below changes and any new columns needed will be included. An exclude column has been added, so you can indicate if a student doesn't need to receive a copy of this file. In the panel on the right, there are additional settings for access levels. So you could indicate that you want whether or not you want the whole class to have access to each individual individual student's stock. So if you wanted to give comment access only to every student's work, you could do that here. You can also change the assigned student level to allow them only to view or to comment. And by default, this is ticked, so the editors can't change the sharing permission, so they can't go and delete you or add somebody else. If you had set up G class folders, you can check this box and more options will appear. And if you have co-teachers, you could add their individual email addresses. More than one can be added, just separate them with a comma. In this case, I'm just doing the very basics. We'll leave them all as default. Click Save and Continue. All right, now we're ready to find the template file that we want to distribute to our students. So you click the Choose Folder button and find the folder that holds the template that you want. There's a little guide at the top that reminds you to check the box for the folder. Don't click on the name. Once you have the right folder selected, you can select the template file or folder from the dropdown below. Now remember, the Doctopus can share out individual files with students or even whole folders that contain documents that they need to have. I'm going to show you one of my favorite tips for distributing docs to students that will help take advantage of the power of Gubrick for assessment later on, and that's handing out a blank piece of paper or a blank Google Doc to every student. So I've got this blank paper template. I'll jump over and show you what it looks like. It's just a simple Google Doc, has a place for them to put their name, the title, and any kind of structure that you need to give them. The nice thing about doing it this way is that later I'll be able to take advantage of Gubrick for using a rubric to assess, which we'll show you in another video. It also makes sure that all files are named properly because I have control over the naming conventions via the Doctopus script. Now, Doctopus needs a place to put all of these files that it's going to be creating. If you've used Doctopus or G class folders to set up individual student folders for them, they'll be shared in those locations. But in any case, you as the teacher need to have a folder that keeps everything organized. An assignment folder name is, is created automatically based on the name of the roster, and then a place for you to put the Doctopus, Doctopus assignment name as well as the date. So I'm going to change this to Doctopus demo, and it has today's date. Keeping your files organized in Drive is really important, and one of my favorite features of Doctopus is that it allows you to automatically name files that it creates by using variables from your spreadsheet and any other information you want to include. In this case, it's started to suggest a naming convention, last name, first name, and it's also suggested a name for me. You can change this if you want. If you scroll down a little bit more, you get the notification settings. So you can notify them automatically when you share it. If you check this box, you can start to fill in the information. Now remember, you can use any of these variables in any of these form fields. So if you wanted to personalize this a little bit more, you could. Now you're ready to share. You can review the settings here and use the back button or menu items to go back to other steps to make any changes that you need. That's it. All of your documents have now been shared and the links and file name, file key are all available. You click on any of the links to open up the doc. After you've run through the entire Doctopus setup, 
you end up at the Document Assignments tool panel. This is where you have all of the more advanced features of Doctopus, such as using Gubrick to assess student work with a rubric. You can refresh the last time edited so you can keep track of how everybody's going. You can embargo the documents, which freezes the students and allows you to grade, grade it without them being able to change it. You'll notice there's also a column called Written Feedback. You can send feedback via email. It'll pull what you write in this cell. And when you're done with the whole assignment, you can transfer ownership back to the students so it cleans up your drive. Now that we've run through the basics of Doctopus, let's go back to the add-ons menu and see how it's changed. Doctopus is still available to us, but now you can see I've got four general sections. The first one, open the Assignments Tools panel. That's this panel over here to the right. Setup takes you back through any of the six steps it takes to run Doctopus. Manage allows you to refresh the last edit time, embargo, send feedback or transfer ownership, and assess is where you'll attach Gubrick. I'll show you how to do that in another video. So I'm really liking the redesign and the new features of Doctopus. I also think that the add-ons gallery is going to be very handy. So for example, if I go and create a new spreadsheet, you'll see that under the add-ons menu I have Doctopus there and it's ready to launch. Now that's pretty cool. And because Doctopus saves my rosters, it's quite easy for me to create a new assignment for my psychology class. Pretty slick. Be sure to check out the links below in the description field to this YouTube video. I've provided some links there to some resources, like the App Script for Education Builders and Users community on Google+. Andrew and a lot of uh, other script lovers and writers are very active in this community, so be sure to share there. Also be sure to check out New Vision's Cloud Lab. This is where you can find the most up-to-date information about all of the scripts that Andrew and the team at New Visions are working on for us. Finally, there's also a link to a blog post that Jenny McGarrett and I wrote and a hangout that we did talking about the new features of Doctopus. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoy the new Doctopus as much as I do. And if you do come up with something really cool, make sure you share it in the community. Happy scripting!